a raw face. Grooves slotted in grooves and a toe bigger and more dramatic than this intro. But are we looking at some of the best wedges released in years and will they find their way into my bag? So these are the Callaway Jaws full toe wedges. And I've had them for a few weeks now and I've got to be honest, I am massively, massively impressed. And the question really is, are they going to be potentially going in my bag because I'm struggling, if I'm being honest with you, to find fault with them so far. Now, even saying this in my soul, it means a great deal because I really, really love my Vokey SM8s. I've had them for over a year now, which let me tell you, for me, is a long time. So to switch them out for a new set of wedges, it could be emotional. I've also done a video with these wedges about how to create the maximum amount of backspin you can around the green. All up that like button, and once it gets to 5,000 likes, that video will drop. And also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 500,000 subscribers. Would love for you to be part of this community. So first up, the Jaws Full Toe is gonna be replacing the PM Grind wedges from Callaway. Now, the PM Grind wedges, the Phil Mickelson Grind wedges, they've been out for a few years now. And to be honest with you, they were an interesting don't don't look at don't look at that one don't look at that one don't look at that one we're not meant to be filming the hole on these ones but those full mickles wedges they really did divide opinion because the shape of them was very very unique and what callaway have been saying with this aspect better there we go there we go that's the only one that's going to go in camera and when you have a look at the marketing that callaway have sent with this wedge this is all about making a full toe wedge a little bit more appealing to the general public. They were finding that the PM grinds were getting a little bit too specialized. Now what I translate that to is they weren't selling many PM grind wedges because they looked a little bit funky. So now they've honed it down and made this full toe design and I've got to be honest, they've done a really good job. So I used to use the tailor-made high toe wedges and these are a very similar shape to that. Feel-wise, they're very, very nice and Callaway say this is the spinniest wedge that they've ever produced. Now the club face, how can we put this? The grooves have grooves inside the grooves and then the face has diagonal grooves across. With me so far, okay. Face is also raw, so I've been using the chrome version of this wedge for the past few weeks and already you can see that the club face is starting to rust, starting to impart that little bit more. Well, I say feel, but it just had some friction to the face. And with these grooves as well, it's all about channeling water and dirt away from the face at impact. So you can impart as much backspin as possible. To test out this wedge, we're gonna be hitting some chip shots, some bunker shots, some pitches, and then we're gonna get back into the studio as well to get the data to really decide if these could replace the Vokies. This wedge is also gonna sit alongside the MD5 Jaws wedge, but this is gonna be the high toe offering. Loft wise, it doesn't go below a 54, which is a slight annoyance, but I think that has to do with the weighting system on the back. Now this is a little bit more golf niche but I think it's very important. These weight ports along the back here, you can see how towards the toe, it's almost like it hasn't been drilled quite as much. Basically, there's more weight here being taken out of the heel and pushed towards the toe. So when balls are struck a little bit more out of the toe of this club face, and you can see how the grooves stretch all the way across, you get a stronger, more consistent flight. And that is one of the biggest issues, certainly with the PM grind wedges, but also this high toe design in general. I don't want to see a weak flighted shot drift out to the right. I want to make sure the CG is a little bit more pushed over this way so I can get some more penetration. That's what we're going to find out if they've actually done a good job of today. Early testing will suggest they have. So let's start with some chips uphill, a bit of pitch grab and a tiny little bit of roll out from right to left. One of the real advantages of these full toe wedges is that you can hit the ball more towards the toe and I do like to play around with that option. The shaping is obviously not quite the same as a normal wedge, certainly my Vokies, but it's not like a design which causes me to chunder a little bit. I mean, the PM grinds, they were, oh, they were a little bit minging. Oh, I do like new wedges. So flop shot over the bunker, landing just over the edge of that bunker. How quickly can we get this to stop? That face, just have a look at that, Jake. Look how wide open you can lay that face. And because the toe is so big, it feels like it's still gonna be making contact with that club face. To get the club face this open, 
with my Voki, this would start to make me a little bit more twitchy, shall we say. Oh man, it, I know it's got in the bunker and I know that's not obviously good, but actually having the courage to hit it that hard, knowing that this club is just gonna slide under. Oh man, that's so good. I mean, it's landed on the down slope. It's very tough to get this to stop, but I'm not gonna say this is the most adaptable wedge that I've ever tested, but I can't think of another one which has been this good off this many lies. And remember, I have been testing this for a few weeks as well. Oh, rip that one there. They're gonna be pretty good at sand as well. Got 10 degrees of bounce on this. And again, I like how the bounce extends all the way to that toe, just allowing that opening up of the club face and that real aggressive action through. Yeah, plows through, it's nice. A slight negative, raw face and blacked out. You can see it's already starting to wear. There's some scuff marks from the bunker. I think that's pretty much unavoidable, but you know, please bear that in mind if you are gonna get one of these wedges with this finish or any other club which has been murdered out. The likelihood is it's gonna wear away pretty quick. 50 yards here. Let's start discovering the type of backspin that we can get. So it's just gonna be a hard swing with a lob wedge. I think I can pitch this pretty much all the way there. Not a bad start. That's a little bit of release on that, to be fair. Backspin 4,274. So I tested out the Mod 1 wedge a few weeks ago. You can kind of check that video out here. That was spinning a little bit more than this. Oh, flown that a bit hard. Oh no, oh yeah, drop and stop, there we go. That was a uh, terrible golf shot. So I'm gonna be using this, this is a 56 degree in the chrome finish with the raw face, which has been exposed for a few weeks. You can see it looks like it's been living at the bottom of a sewer, but it, this is what it's meant to be like. That's not too bad. 5,369 of backspin. Drag wise good and flight maybe a little bit higher than I'd want, but pretty consistent. But the only way to assess is to get some proper data. So let's get back to the studio, compare it to the Vokey and have a consideration. So back in the studio, we got 75 yards away from the pin and I'm gonna have a fuller swing with the lob wedge. I've just hit 10 away with the SMA just to get some data. Again, I know that flight, I know that spin. The only difference we do have to bear in mind, my SMA is obviously older than this wedge, which is literally out of the wrapper today. So I'd be expecting the jaws full toe to get more spin. If it doesn't get more spin, then that actually probably raises more questions than it answers. But 75 yards, using the Vice Pro here. It's quite a different feel and sound to the Vokey. Not a bad start though, is it? A little bit of backspin, bang online, a little bit far, actually 79. Maybe my health is returning. That's a nice sound to be fair, that. What I'm looking for really, if this has any chance of getting in the bag, it's just a consistency of flight, which I know is there with the SM8. And we'll get that by looking at the data, looking at launch and spin. Absolutely tearing the cover off this ball. Oh my word. <laughs> so 10 shots with each wedge. I've rounded them down to eight, just taking out a couple of outliers, basically the longest and the shorter shots. And some very interesting numbers here, which will have a massive bearing on whether I put these clubs in the bag. So first of all, the Vokey SMA average backspin there at 10,863, but the consistency of those shots was absolutely excellent. Also the launch angle, so 27.9, 26, 26, 28, 27, 27, 28, 28, just very, very consistent in their overall flight trajectory. Average carry and average total there, 75 yards. And as the target was 75 yards away, that makes me happy. But I am of course used to these wedges, so I would expect good results. So what I'm looking for with the Jaws full toe is some kind of marker, something which will say, okay, 
as far as performance goes, these are a little bit better. And now onto the jaws. And well, carry distance and total distance 76 and 76. So again, very consistent. It maybe felt like the fly was a bit stronger with the 60 degree full toe, but that would be me just interpreting that, you know, launch angles, descent angles, again, very, very similar. But now we come to the number which really matters, I suppose, backspin. So on average, the backspin with the bogey, let me remind you, ladies and gentlemen, was 10,863. The average backspin with the jaws full toe, 10,825. So I was getting less backspin off the new jaws than I was with my old Vokey. That shouldn't be the case. I should be getting more backspin with the brand new wedge. Flight, strike, launch, everything was pretty much the same. So all that is saying is that my old Vokey is spinning just as much as this new Jaws. So to weigh up, we have to say, okay, well, they're both spinning the same even after that amount of time. Is that Jaws full toe actually a more adaptable wedge? Will I favor it a little bit more around the greens? There's something in that, but at the same time, why would I switch out a very good wedge for another very good wedge if there isn't that marked improvement in overall performance? So for now, the Vokey staying in. So for more wedge videos, make sure you check out these here. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Get down into those comments. Let us know what you think. I'll see you next time.